Hello, everyone. There is a Japanese proverb that says, "Fall down seven times and get up eight." Well, I may have not fallen down seven. There's probably a lot more that I've fallen down, but I've definitely gotten up. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. I、uh, grew up in foster care. I went into foster care when I was nine years old. I was physically abused, sexually abused. Emotionally abused and neglected. And during my time in foster care, it was mostly kinship. I lived with a lot of family on my reserve in Wakamakong. And during that time, I was sexually assaulted twice. And because of that, and because of everything that I went through, I went downhill, and I started to use drugs, prescription drugs. And it lasted for about a year. And during that time, My friends, my families—they all tried to convince me to stop. Some of them threatened to, you know, disown me. Nothing that they said meant anything. School meant nothing to me anymore. I stopped going. Sports—I loved playing sports, and it meant nothing to me. Until one day, my teacher, my English teacher, came up to me and she told me that I was not going to graduate. I didn't want to be like everyone else who gets caught up in drugs or alcohol and doesn't have much of a life. That they don't succeed, they're not happy, they have no dreams and goals. So when she told me this, it hit me hard, and that is what saved me. I removed myself from my community. I switched high schools, and I graduated in my fifth year. And I decided to go to Canada College for journalism. Now, one thing. That I've been doing is advocacy work since I was 15 years old, and I believe that resiliency plays a very important role in that. You know, the ability to bounce back from any given situation and to keep moving forward, and that's what I did. I started off at the Ontario Association of Children's Aid Society's Youth Can Group, Can being communication, advocacy, and network. And what that is is youth in care from the province of Ontario. They get together and they get to network and they get to make their makeshift family. They get to be around people that have similar experiences and that they can relate. And with youth can, there's you there's different zones and, and within your communities, and you get to meet people that are close by that you can talk to, that you can have a friend. And every year we hold an annual conference with two to three hundred youth from all over the province that come, and you get to really network. You get to meet people. You get to learn life skills. It's really great. It it definitely made me the person I am today. I have a lot of close friends that I've met when I started at 15, and shortly after that, I decided to join a policy. Group with the Ontario Association of Children's Aid Society, which is the Youth Policy Advisory Advocacy Group, and then we are a really knit, clit,、uh, tight family. And what we do is we talk, make presentations, talk to government officials, try to create change for youth in care. And I'm really, really passionate about that. And that was going really well, but that's not where. My passion started burning. I attended in 2012 an international youth and care conference in Baltimore, and I got to meet youth and care, current and former, from all over the world. And it's so crazy to see and hear that exactly what I'm going through and the problems they're going through, things and services and supports that they need, they're not getting. Just like here in Ontario, Canada. And this is when I decided what I wanted to do with my life. And I was 20 years old. I wanted to communicate to the world the hardships that youth in care face, and I wanted to be a voice for youth in care to fight for what's right and for what they deserve. And shortly after that, the provincial advocate for children and youth held the youth leaving care hearings, and it's the first time this has ever happened. It was held at Queens Park. And we had about 40 different people come in, sit in front of a bunch of government officials, and tell them their story. 
And my role during this was the panel chair. So my duty was to make sure that they told their stories and I made sure that the government representatives really could understand and relate. To, to make it like if, as if they were in our shoes. And it was a huge success. It boomed. A lot of people heard about it. Uh, Japan wants to do something like that. It just soared. And from those hearings, we wrote a report, My Real Life Book. And there's a bunch of copies out back over there. And we talked about things that youth in care face. And I was a co-author, and I wrote the section, Care Ends and We Struggle. Because see, before a youth turns 18 years old, they live either in a foster home, a group home, or with family. And the way it works is when they turn 18, they have to move out right on their 18th birthday. Those are the rules, which is pretty hard, I say. I don't think many other parents that are not in the child welfare system would kick their kids out at 18 years old. And from 18 to 21, you're given a monthly allowance, which is definitely below the poverty line. And you have that monthly allowance to try to survive while you're already dealing with all your traumatic experiences, trying to work, trying to go to school, trying to make a life for yourself. To me, I think that's unfair. And that is one thing that I'm focusing on to change. So from this report, that explains all the different struggles and hardships that youth in care face. There's a blueprint that came out of it, and the blueprint was from the Ministry of Children and Youth Services working group, and I was on that working group. We had many battles, bumped heads, very hard discussions to make sure that each issue that youth in care face wasn't forgotten, wasn't belittled. You can find this on the Ministry of Children and Youth services website for more information and more details of each recommendation that was made. And right now, on May 8th, will be um, a private member's bill to declare May 14th Children and Youth in Care Day. And it was in the government last year, but it was killed because Dalton McGinty stepped down. But all over the province, different CAS agencies and organizations are going to be hosting some, what, some event to celebrate Children and Youth in Care Day. So like I was saying earlier, I feel that resiliency plays a very important role in advocacy. And I have a strong passion for advocacy for youth in care. But as I was going on my journey, I realized that I wanted to do more advocacy, not just for youth in care, but for youth in general. I wanted to make sure that all youth have a voice. Most of you in the audience may or may not know that one example of great advocacy is the I Don't Know More movement. And I feel that it's very interesting that this movement started by four Aboriginal women. And it's known by our culture that the women, Aboriginal women, are the ones that speak up and want to make change. So I wanted to follow in their example. I attended an Aboriginal forum for youth called Feathers of Hope, and it got the chance for Aboriginals, children and youth from the, across the province to come and tell us what, what they need to be changed and make rec recommendations to government officials to make them listen. Also, in Ottawa, there is the First Nations Child Welfare Tribunal Hearings, and I'm going to be beginning a blog to make sure that youth across Canada really understand and make it simple for them to understand what's going on and why it's so important that the government give proper funding for child welfare services in Canada. So advocacy is really important. And I feel that everyone has a story to tell and that our youth, what they think and what they feel is important. So advocacy is definitely worth spreading and more importantly, our youth are worth it. After all, they are the next generation and they matter. Thank you.